By the end of today's video, you will see how to configure Google Ads Add to Cart event for WooCommerce store using Google Tag Manager. First thing first, we have to make sure that you have proper access to all of the accounts. So on WordPress, go to your backend and then click on users. Right next to your email, make sure that you have admin access so you can make changes to the plugins and add or remove any plugins that you need. For the Google Tag Manager container, go to the admin section and then click on user management under the container settings. You should have published access, otherwise you won't be able to make the changes live. For Google Ads, go to admin and access and security and make sure that you have either admin access or standard access to make conversions on Google Ads account. First thing is to make sure that our Google Tag Manager container is properly firing on the WordPress backend. There are multiple ways to do it. However, I like using a plugin called GTM for WP. Using this plugin, it makes sure that we do have the data layer in future that we need for Add to Cart. So let's install the plugin. Go back to the WordPress backend and then click on plugins and add new plugins. This will take you to a new page where we can add or search for any plugin. On the top right corner where there is a field for search plugin, search for GTM for WP. The first search result that came up is by Thomas Greger and we are going to use this plugin to create the data layer and then use the same plugin to activate and create the Google Tag Manager containers too. Great! This will automatically redirect you to the plugin page. However, if, if it does not do that, just click on the installed plugins. Now click on the settings right below Google Tag Manager for WordPress and this is where we are going to paste the ID of the GTM container. Let's go back to the Google Tag Manager container, copy the ID and then paste the ID right here. Great. Once you have added the ID, make sure that you hit save changes. There is one minor glitch with this plugin that as soon as you hit on save changes, this will turn off the container code. Make sure that the container code is on and click on save changes one more time. This should have successfully added Google Tag Manager container on your website. However, it is really a good practice just to make sure if everything is working all right. All you have to do is go to the workspace tab in Google Tag Manager and then go click on the preview button on the top right corner. Preview button is more like a temporary debug window which will let us see all the events that are firing on the website and we can debug them. Let's add any URL of the website and click on connect. In this temporary debug session where we have the website open with the preview window, we can see what kind of events are firing in the data layer and whether the Google Tag Manager container has been properly added on the website. The first option to confirm is just to use a tag legacy assistant Chrome extension and this will show you that the Google Tag Manager container is firing properly on the website. As long as this smiley face on the right side is not red or yellow, that means everything is working all right. The second way to verify is on the bottom of the website, you can see that the tag assistant has been connected it successfully and if you go back to the preview window you will see that we do have the container here and all the container events are within this particular container so everything looks good now the second step is to create the conversion action and conversion label for add to cart event inside google ads so let's just go to the google ads account and under goals click on conversions and then click on summary this is where we are going to create the google ads add to cart conversion action great once the page has been loaded click on the new conversion action since we are using website and Google Tag Manager container, we are going to select the first option which says website. Let's enter the URL of our website right here. And click on scan. Now we have to click on create conversion action manually. Since we are creating add to cart conversion action, we already have a sales category for that. We are going to select primary conversion action for this and for the name, let's select add to cart. We are going to use different values for this conversion action and all the settings you can change according to your own marketer's needs. However, I like to keep them default. Let's hit done. Great. Let's hit save and continue. This will take you to another page where we will be given with the conversion IDs and the conversion label. Let's use Google Tag Manager and these are the conversion IDs we are going to use and these are the conversion labels that we are going to use. Now, we have to make sure that we do have the data layer enabled inside Google Tag Manager. So let's go back to the WordPress backend and right under the plugin settings, which is under settings and Google Tag Manager. Let's go to the integration tabs and then click on WooCommerce. Make sure to click on track e-commerce event and at the bottom of the page, click on clear previous object and now hit save changes. Doing these two things will make sure that your e-commerce tracking is working fine. Now let's just verify if this change has actually been implemented on the website or not. Let's go to any of the product pages on the website and then we will try to trigger an add to cart event. Great. Let's try clicking on add to cart on this page to see if the data layer event has fired or not. Let's go back to the debug window and we can see that the data layer event for add to cart event has fired. 
And if we expand it, we can see the value, currency, and all the item details that we have. Perfect. So we do have the add to cart event working, and we also have created the conversion action and the conversion label. The last thing left is to make sure that the tag is firing properly. Let's go back to the Google Tag Manager container. However, before creating the tag, we need a few things. First thing we need is a conversion linker tag. And this conversion linker tag is mainly like a configuration tag, which will fire on all the pages of the website. Therefore, I'm going to select all pages for this trigger. Now let's go to Google Ads and select the Google Ads conversion linker. We don't have to make any changes on this page, so let's just click on save by renaming the tag to Google Ads conversion linker. Perfect. Unlike the conversion linker, we want add to cart event to only fire on one particular event, and that is going to be the trigger which is based on this naming convention. So let's copy the name and go back to the Google Tag Manager container and create a new trigger for this one. The trigger is going to be a custom event since this is a custom data layer event and let's rename it to custom event for add to cart. Once you will hit save, this will create the conversion trigger for this tag. Now let's go back to the tag section and create a tag that will only track the add to cart event. For the trigger, let's create the newly created trigger that we have. And for the tag, I'm going to select Google Ads conversion tracking tag. Great. First thing it needs is a conversion label. So let's go back to the Google Ads account and get the conversion ID from here. Uh, we can paste the conversion ID right here, like this. However, for the optimization sake, I always like to make sure that the conversion IDs are inside a constant variable, like this. So let's rename this as Google Ads conversion ID and hit save. Great. The next thing we need is the conversion label. So let's get this conversion label. Let's also create the same constant variable for this one. Let's rename this as Google as conversion label add to cart. Perfect, let's hit save. Great, uh, we do have the value. Uh, let me show you where the value variable is. Uh, once I will open this debug window on the side. The value is inside an e-commerce object and it's inside the value. So what we can do is we can create a data layer variable that will access this value right here. So let's create a data layer variable which will look for this e-commerce object and to get anything inside an object we use dot notation and then we need the value from here. So let's get the value right here. Perfect. Let's rename it as DLV for data layer variable and e-commerce dot value. We might need to do the same thing for currency code. So let's also do that. Let's create a new data layer variable for this one. And let's rename it to DLV currency. Great. And let's rename it to DLV dot currency. Perfect. Uh, we don't have transaction ID when add to cart event is firing. However, we do have the product level information. We have two options. Either, either we can create a data layer object for this items array and pass it right here, or we can just select it to data layer. Both options work fine. Since we don't have customer information, user provided data, or shipping data at this point, we are going to leave all of these things empty. Let's rename this tag to Google Ads Conversion Tracking Add to Cart. I'm going to maximize this window so we can see the whole page. And let's click on save. Now we have successfully added the Google Ads conversion tracking tag. We can do the same thing for remarketing tag by selecting the same trigger that we have for the conversion tracking tag. And under the ads, we are going to select Google Ads remarketing. We have already created the constant for Google Ads conversion ID, and we have also created the constant for Google Ads conversion label. We can also send dynamic ads data, and the name of the event is add to cart. The value, we also have this in a variable, which is e-commerce.value. Let's select that. And for the items array, we can create a new data layer variable, which is e-commerce.items. So let's create a new data layer variable, which is e-commerce.items. So let's rename it as DLV e-commerce.items. Perfect. We don't have any customer information. We don't have user ID. So let's leave all of these things empty. And let's rename it to Google Ads remarketing tag for add to cart event. Perfect. Let's hit save. Now we have created the conversion tag and the remarketing tag for add to cart event. However, before going to the next step, it's really good to make sure that everything is working all right. So let's do one more test to make sure everything is working all right. I'm going to open both of the windows side by side so we can see the data layer event on the left side and we can see the website on the right side. Great. My debug window has been connected to the website. I'm going to go to any of the product pages. Let's go to this particular product. 
since this one has a variations, I'm going to select one option, let's say 100 grams. And now I'm going to click on add to cart. As soon as I click on add to cart event, you can see that the data layer has been updated and we have two triggers that are fired. That is the Google Ads conversion tracking tag and the remarketing tag. You cannot verify this information on this page right now because as soon as I click on add to cart event, the page is refreshing. However, there are there is another option to test that. If you click on control and then click on add to cart, this will still fire the add to cart event, but it will redirect the user to another page. And you will still be able to see the Google Ads conversion tracking tag. So we can see that the uh, purchase, the value was 19. It has USD and this is the conversion ID and the conversion label. If you want to check more information, you can go to the URL tab and then go to this button, which will simplify the whole request. And then you can see all the information about the URL, about the product, all the things that we are sending, the name and all the good things. If you will expand this request and go to the metadata, you can see that the add to cart event is fired and its ID was 27 and this is from the retail. Great, now we have successfully configured Google Ads conversion tracking on the website. The only thing left is to make sure that these changes are not pending and they are live on the website. So let's hit publish. Great, now we have successfully pushed the changes on the website. Now, if you want to see how to track view item event, that is whenever a user goes to any product pages on your Google Ads account, click on this video.